All right, let's tackle the first part of this together real quick. Um, so we're going to have to update local storage anytime we change one of these, right? So not only when we add a new one, but when we favorite it or we delete something. So I'm just going to make a separate method for it. I'll call it save. And what it's going to do is local storage dot set item flicks. And it's going to set it to this dot flicks. And that's all it's going to do. Store the flicks array in local storage. OK, it's not quite all it's going to do, right? It's got to be stringified first, right? JSON dot stringify. So when do I want to do that? I definitely want to do it when I add one. So in handle submit, uh, after I push one on there, we can do it then. So we can just do it here at the end. Uh, oh, you can do it at the very end if you want, whatever you think. This dot save. We need to do it every time we remove a flick from the array. <coughs> Update local storage. This dot save. You need to do it every time we change a favorite. And that probably ought to do it, right? So let's try doing all of those things. It's at uh, Catfa, Captain America, the first Avenger with Evans. Yeah, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Cause with Evans. We got Captain America Civil War, Kaka with Evans. Nah, Winter Soldier was boring. First Avenger, that's where it's at. Well, let's check it out. Oh, remember the Applications tab? You can totally check out local storage there. So there we go. Flix. I got, yeah, it doesn't really fit. But you can totally check there. Let's just load it out of there. I'll do a JSON parse local storage dot get item flicks with another parenthesis. There's only two things in there, and they are Kafka and Kaka. It worked. And looks like, yep, we got a favorite. So go us. Ah, but we want them to come back when we refresh the page, right? So they're still there. They're still in local storage, but I didn't load them back into my app. So how about another one besides save, load? Load flicks from local storage. So local storage get item flicks. And that's not going to be an actual array yet, right? That's going to be a string still. So we'll see json.parse, the opposite of stringify. So I'll say const flix equals that. Then we want to say this.flix equals that, right? Okay, I didn't do anything with the UI yet, but if I do app.flix, ah, oh, well, I never called load, right? So I want to load in the constructor. Which, uh, well, I guess we didn't, can just do that without even setting it here. Uh, better do, we better still do that. So what if I just do what if I just do this here? Load. What might happen? I meant this dot load. Uh, app dot flicks now. 
Cool. Uh, but if there were nothing in, if there were nothing in, well, let's, let's, can I still add a new one? Yeah, adding one still totally works. What if there were nothing in local storage, though? What if we clear this out? And I try to add one. Explode. Cannot read property push of null. So it's trying to call null.push because there was nothing in local storage, but we set this.flix equal to what we got out of local storage anyway. See the problem? So now this.flix is null, so I'm later calling this.flix.push, so I'm calling null.push. So one potentially easy way to fix this. Ever done that trick before? Use or like that? So the way or works, it doesn't actually return true or false necessarily. If the first thing if it, in an or is truthy, then it just returns that thing. So if flicks were actually a proper array, it would say, okay, this is a truthy thing. I don't even need to evaluate the other side of the or. I'm just going to return that. So then flicks gets assigned this value. If that's something falsy, like null, then it g goes ahead and checks the right side of the or. And if that's truthy, it returns that. So it doesn't actually return true or false. It returns the thing, the first thing it comes to that's true. Get it? So you can totally say this.flix equals flix or an empty array. If flix is a thing, give me flix. If it's not, give me an empty array. So now app.flix is an empty array instead of being null. So I should be able to add. Yeah. Get it? Cool. But they're not on the page yet, right? What could we do? Let's see. Um, save, eh, store, store flicks in local storage. Still not syncing the UI, but by golly, we're persisting our data, and that's a, that's a start. So how could we even do the next part? Basically, when we load them from local storage, we need to kind of loop over that and then do all of this stuff again. Uh, do all this stuff again. Right? So what if we had... A function called add flick that just takes a flick. <coughs> and that does this stuff. Now, all handle submit is doing is stuff related to the form. All this is related to the form. All this is related to the form, except this. Well, except save, right? So save. Actually, what should happen there? And add flick does the job of, I mean, it's still only three lines long, but it's the thing that actually adds it to the array. renders the list item and appends the list item to the list. So now that that's separated into a separate method, not only is handle submit nice and short, but then what if we just did something like this? Up here in load. We could go back to just... Uh, Uh, 
about this dot flicks dot map this dot add flick how about that add flick <coughs> just takes a flick as its argument right each thing in that array is going to be a flick Get it? Or for each. That works too. For each thing that's in the array, we want to add it to the page. And that's what add flick does, right? It renders the list item and all that stuff. So we just call add flick from handle submit, and we call add flick from load. Add each flick to the UI. Cannot read property flicks of undefined. On line 116, what did I do on line 116? Flicks of push. Yeah. See the problem here? It says this is undefined. Why? Because of for each. So we could always do an arrow function, right? The arrow function takes flick as an argument, calls add flick, passes the flick in. That's an awful lot of parentheses. There you go. A uh, little tip about arrow functions. If you only have one argument, you don't actually need the parentheses. If you have zero arguments, you need, you need the empty parentheses there before the arrow. But if you only have one, you don't actually need it there. So for each flick, call this add flick, adding, passing that flick in as an argument. Understand? Do you understand how we're using for each here? And do you get why I changed it to an arrow function? Because we weren't the ones calling add flick before, right? It was getting called from within for each. And when you call it a function from within for each, uh, we discovered it actually sets this to null, to absolutely nothing. Did this fix it? Can I read property of pin child of undefined now on 119? 119, okay. This dot list dot a pin child. Because I called load before we uh, got the list off the page. No problem. Let's do load a little lower down, or at least at least do it right after I get the list off the page. I need the list before I call load. No big deal. There it is. So if I add more, Guardians of the Galaxy with our friend Pratt. There it is. That's my favorite. Refresh the page. Okay, now I've got Thor twice. If I do it again. Okay, I don't get them all twice. Let's delete that again. What's going on here? Refresh. Oh, now they're all there twice. But hey. What? You know why? Yeah. yeah. Right. So, instead of this dot flicks for each, let's just do flicks for each. And let's go back to initializing flicks to as an empty array. This dot flicks equals empty array. Make it an empty array, then load them from local storage. So we load them from local storage. Then for each one that's there, uh, so we can't call for each on null, so we still better check out that flicks is actually an array. So if flicks, do the for each. Now I've actually got that many in local storage, so let's just start over. Refresh. I got nothing. Thor, Hemsworth, Cap, Evans, Dinos, Pratt. 
Pew, pew in space. Fine. Refresh. Got the same ones back. Delete cap out of there. Mark dinos as our favorite. Refresh. Same, but it didn't mark it as a favorite, did it? So that's one little uh, change we're going to have to make. No problem. We just need to tog call toggle favorite, right? <coughs> Flick an item. So we have both the flick and the item here. So we could do that. We could just say uh, this dot toggle favorite. Not for toggle favorite, sorry. Um, what can we do? How's the easiest way to do this? If flick dot favorite this dot toggle favorite. Yeah, that's going to turn it off though. How do I want to do this? How do I usually do this? I think I think uh let's not overthink this. Flick dot favorite item dot class list dot add fave. We could do that before we add it to the to before we append it if we want. If it's a favorite, add that class. There we go. Right? Not a favorite anymore. Those are our favorite. Refresh. We get them all back. Delete one of them. They come back just the same. So now they don't go away. Victory is ours. What was my last commit? Store flicks and local storage. Um, load flicks from local storage. Um, what this? Update UI with flicks from local storage. So now do you see why I wanted to make the array in the first place? That makes it a lot easier to do this. Having separated it into multiple functions also made it a lot easier to do this. Made it easier to find where we needed to add all this stuff. Questions about that? So it actually wasn't that hard. It wasn't even that many lines of code. But it's a new concept. So once you're used to it, though, it doesn't actually take a whole lot of work to do that kind of thing. Now this is starting to be a fairly robust thing here. There's another thing that was just bothering me that I just forgot. <laughs>